All right, guys, welcome back to another Evil GT video. I am Ben, Lee is holding the camera, and today I'm going to talk to you about the RS3 after three months of ownership. As with every car out there, there's some great points, there's some terrible points, and we'll go through them all in this video. So this particular car is the RS3 8Y 2022 Launch Edition in Daytona Grey Pearl Effect paint. One of the best parts of the styling of this car is these wheels. Look at them, uncomplicated, plain and look mint. So as with all Launch Editions, it's got the black styling pack, which gives you this massive black grille. You also get these sporty headlights, which are the LED Matrix headlights. So you know the ones that dim out when there's a car in front of you, all that sort of stuff. And they also, best part about them, this bit just down here spells out RS3 and then you get a could flag. I'm sure you'll agree from the front this looks a lot more aggressive than the outgoing 8V. Mixed reviews about these bulging wings and the integrated vents but you genuinely need to see them in person to appreciate them they look brilliant. So the side profile of the 8V was very very flat and plain as you can see with this there's loads of little lines and little creases and little details in the door to give it that added aggressive look. One thing you'll notice very quickly walking up to this car is the size of these front brakes they are massive in complete contrast to the back brakes. However, they are only plain discs, and in my opinion, they should be drilled to match the front. It would look a lot better from the side profile of this car. And another thing to mention about these wheels, they're even wider than the outgoing car. They're 265s on the front and 245s on the rear. The old one was 255s on the front and 235s on the rear. And continuing with the launch edition theme, you get your black wing mirror caps and the black trim around the windows and you also get privacy glass. This car sits way better than the standard car purely because we put spaces on it, both the back and the front, and it fills the arches much better. Coming round to the back of the car now, this is by far the least aggressive part of this car's styling. So these exhaust tips are now integrated into the bumper, but they're not connected to the main exhaust, which is a bit of a shame, but they do still look really, really good, particularly with the perforated metalwork inside. One thing I wasn't so keen on was this honeycomb bit, but to be fair, it has grown on me a little bit. So this particular car, I don't think you can buy new now. There's no launch editions left. They all come with silver badges. If you're looking to get something with a similar spec, now you've got to look at the Vorsprung. They do come with all the black badges. So a lot of people have said, this looks like a baby RS6, what do you think? Grey in general is a very boring safe colour, but I think it works on this car being a launch edition with the black styling pack. The paint is a pearlescent paint, so it's got loads of blues and greens and yellows in the actual metallic as well, so it looks amazing in the sunshine. So in my opinion, they've got the styling of this car just about right. It's not Focus RS, it's not Honda Civic Type R, but it is a lot more aggressive looking than the old 8V, which was very soft looking. I think they've got the balance just right. The only way to get a pan roof on an RS3 is to either order a second-hand one of these or a brand new Vorsprung. One of the biggest disappointments with this car is the interior. It lacks the build quality of the 8V. Although it's a lot more updated and it looks a lot better from the inside, it's nowhere near as well put together and it doesn't feel as solid or as premium, certainly not for a 60 grand car. I do like the seats, the honeycomb stitching, the RS, but again, they're very, very plain. The green marketing car, the saloon, that had all the green accents on the inside. It had green Alcantara shoulders, green stitching. Straight away, just from choosing a different color for the details in the seats, it made the interior feel a lot more expensive. One thing I didn't think I'd be able to get used to is this gear selector here, but after a couple of days, it's fine. Adding to the lack of premium feel in this cabin is this steering wheel. I mean, other than the fact it says RS there, that could be off any Audi car. I do know that there are people that have complained about the little volume control just here. It used to be a little twisty dial and now it's like a touch pad type thing. I have never used it since I've driven the car in 4,000 miles. It's no issue to me. I do actually quite like this carbon fibre trim. It's nice, it's smooth, it looks premium and yeah, there's not enough of it though in my opinion. So for those who know me, I am actually five foot seven, but in my head I'm six foot two. But as you can see, for somebody that's five foot seven driving and five foot seven behind, there's loads and loads of room. As with most hatchbacks now, it does have a decent sized boot, perfect for what I need it for. One thing to note is that it doesn't go as low as a lot of other A3s, and that's because the battery's there, and obviously the diff is underneath it for the Quattro system and that kind of thing. But otherwise, decent sized boot. So there is only one last thing to do, and that's take it for a drive. 
Now, before we leave, I must just say a very quick thank you to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Now, obviously, this car is a brand spanking new car when we bought it. There is no reason to get a car history check done on this car at all. However, if you're looking to purchase a second-hand car, whether that be from a main dealer or privately, it is really important to get a car check done. So what I do have here is an example RS3 for you. This car doesn't have any mileage discrepancies. It's never been recorded as stolen, but it has been written off. The whole front end has been damaged. So what's amazing with this report is you get photographs of the damage. It also gives you even more detail as to exactly what was damaged in the report as well. And it would give you a rough estimate on the costs involved in getting it back sorted. So Car Vertical checks thousands and thousands of different databases all over the world, including for things like if there's finance outstanding on it, whether there's any mileage discrepancies, whether it's been written off, obviously, whether it's been stolen. It even gives you details on when the car was last for sale and exactly how much for. You get all the model details as well as all the factory specifications that the car came with when it was built. So we've got our own special link in the description. If you'd like to go and get yourself your own report, click that Go and check that out, as well as a code EVILGT10 will get you some money off as well. Thank you very much. Cheers to Car Vertical. Let's get on with the drive. So, for those of you guys who may not know, before this car, I owned an 8V Sportback, Sport Edition. Uh, I had that for about 18 months. Loved that car, thought it looked great. It was in white, which wasn't my first choice colour, but it was one of the last remaining cars available at the time. But it was a brilliant car. I had it tuned, did a few little modifications to it, and uh, it was great. However, when you buy one of these cars afterwards and you change straight from that car to this car, you appreciate the drive of this car straight away. First thing that you notice is that this pulls way harder. Audi quote that this car has 20 newton meters more than the old car. I'm telling you right now, it's 100% got more torque. I mean, we proved that, there's dyno videos. Uh, I don't know if Lee, our editor, Mr. Lee, who was holding the camera for us, um, if he can put the video up there, you go and see the dyno video. And this actually did produce more than the torque that Audi stated. The second thing you notice is the steering. It's so much sharper and more direct than the 8V. You notice and you find yourself going into, say, a roundabout or a bend, and you correct your steering because of your, you've, you've basically put too much steering input into the corner. It reminds me of TT's. Uh, a TT in relation to an A3, for instance, it was so much quicker and more responsive through the steering wheel than the A3 ever was. And obviously that was to try and give it a more sporty feel when you were driving the car. This reminds me of a TT straight away. And unfortunately, when you pull up to a set of traffic lights, it brings your attention to the interior of this car. I've lived with this now for 4,200 miles for three months. And do you know what? It really upsets me. This car's interior, it upsets me so much. The old car, the 8V, everyone knows that interior had been around for years and years and years, but it was solid, it was put together really well, it was simple, it was plain. This is just the plastics and just the, the creaks that I'm getting from this B-pillar here. You instantly know that corners have been cut in the interior of this car and it does not scream £60,000 plus it, it just doesn't. And another thing to mention quickly is the Bang & Olufsen sound system. It's good. It's not absolutely amazing, it's good. I like to listen to my music quite loud, to be fair. The issue that I have is that if you have anything that's even remotely a bit bassy, it rattles the door cards quite bad. And that's something else that you just sort of, it taints the fact that this car has cost you so much money. It doesn't feel again as the quality product and the premium product inside as it should do. However, what you cannot argue with and you cannot say anything bad about is the ride in this car. The 8V that I had, you instantly knew you were in an RS3. The, the suspension was so much more firm, which is exactly what you want. However, as a daily driver, it was quite crashy. It didn't dampen amazingly well. It was okay as a ride. This, with the uh, mag ride with the adaptive suspension, it's night and day even better than the adaptive suspension you got in the 8V previous model. I had an S3 with the mag ride in it and I didn't like it. It was twitchy under heavy braking. It didn't feel, it didn't feel great. This is phenomenal. In comfort, it's brilliant. It irons the bumps out really, really well. You would never in a million years think that you were in an RS3. But then in dynamic, it still dampens fantastically. It still irons the bumps out, but it's so much more firm. 
there's nowhere near as much body roll. It does a really good job of both dynamic driving and comfort driving together. We also recently took this car to an airstrip and we wanted to actually get some 0 to 60 figures, quarter mile figures, because I was convinced that it was significantly quicker than the old car. The Audi quoted 3.8 seconds to 60, and if you go and click the banner up there, you'll watch that video and you'll see that I managed, I think on an unprepped surface, and it was not a great airstrip either, it was just for microlighting really. It was 3.38 seconds, I think, to 60, 11.55 quarter miles. And here's a bit of an example as to what the launch feels like. Foot hard on the brake, mash the throttle, launch control, and off we go. <laughs> One thing to note now is how much more playful this car is. The back end steps out and you can really feel it moving around over the back end and that's without it being in RS performance torque rear. Um, that is literally just in RS, either individual you can set that up however you want or RS performance which I've just put it in which is really a track setup but either way it sends so much more power, it feels like it sends so much more power to the rear end and you can really feel it squirrel around at the back and you sort of have to counter it a little bit. In RS torque rear I had a little play about with that on the airstrip when we did the drag racing day and for fun, skidded, drifting U-turns down at the bottom of the drag strip. I mean, what more could you want? Something that people are doing 3.2, I've done a 3.3 second to 60 mile an hour in, and it goes sideways. Yes, it's expensive. This particular car was around 58, 59,000, I think, um, which is a lot of money for a hatchback. It's a fortune for a hatchback, but then you can spec a Golf R up to 50 grand now. And for me, for the extra seven, 8,000 pounds, <laughs> It's an absolute no-brainer. One last thing on the driving dynamics. I am disappointed with the brakes. The brakes for me are absolutely enormous up front and pff, they're just not up to it for me. If you're a driver that enjoys driving, enjoys driving quickly, the brakes will disappoint. Uh, we took it on uh, one track day uh, and it wasn't even a full track day we took it on. We did, I don't know, probably about 10, 12 laps and the brakes now are awful. Um, it definitely needs uh, new pads and probably better brake fluid, probably Motul 660 or something like that. But for those who are considering an RS3, if you are sort of hard on the brakes and you do have the cash, I would definitely consider the carbon ceramics. Yes, for day-to-day -day driving, it's complete overkill, but if you enjoy driving your car, one of the first things we did with this car was take it on track. It's certainly something that you would, you would naturally do, but yeah, brakes wise, change the pads, change the brake fluid, and you should be good. And that brings me neatly onto the reason as to why we are selling this car. We always had it as a stopgap for a car that we ordered, which was the RS3 Saloon Vorsprung with the dynamic pack, which gave you the carbon ceramics and the um, speed limit increase. The car has been shipped, so it's currently in the in the middle of the water. It should arrive at UK uh, in the UK tomorrow. Hopefully, get consigned and uh, through customs by Thursday, Friday this week, and we should be in it next week. So, yeah, great news, exciting news. That then means that we can start doing some modifications and we've got some amazing things for that car lined up already modifications wise. There's loads coming. Once again, thank you very much to Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Thank you very much to you guys for watching this. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Evil GT channel. It means a lot to us, it helps massively. If you wanna see more progress on another RS3 that we will actually be able to do bits too, then yeah, a subscribe means that you won't miss anything. Hit the bell. And there we go. And most of the videos I do with Lee, he doesn't film, um, he is usually on the videos. So if you want to see another baldy, uh, he, uh, <laughs> he's going to cut this out because it's swearing again. But yeah, so he, uh, he's on the videos as well.